CAR-T therapy has changed the way we think about cancer treatment. However, the process isn't complex. As you can see here, there's, you start with an impaired starting material. There's complex logistics, time to delivery to the patient is length, lengthy. The cost is high, and the limited uh, availability creates a challenge for multi-dosing. And at the same time, when you engineer the product, not every cell is engineered, and not every engineered cell is pristine. At Faith Therapeutics, we've been working on using iPSCs as a starting material. These are pluripotent cells that are maintained in a Petri dish, have the unlimited uh, self-renewability, and can at any time become any of the 200 cell types in the body. We've taken advantage of this product, using it at a single cell level to do precise engineering, to create master cell banks, to create uniform uh, composition of cell material, and have extensive characterization to be able to create clonal cell lines to make homogeneous cell products. This is done by the scheme you see here. We reprogram, engineer, and we drop single cells into a 96-wall plate, allow that population to expand. It becomes a continuous culture. The culture maintains its pluripotency, genomic stability, and now you have the ability to do uh, very precise engineering. As you can see in the middle, you can drop uh, several genes in into a targeted um, locus and end up with a pure population of cells carrying those uh, genes. In another strategy, you can knock out various um, genes. Here we targeted beta-2 microglobulin in a biallelic manner at the single cell level, got rid of the um, expression of B2M, and hence HLA class one expression. So now we have a pure product that is knocked out. We, we take that um, engineered um, product and we induce differentiation into hematopoiesis. So here we go from an iPSC to a CD34 positive hematopoietic progenitor cell and continue that differentiation into NK cells and T cells. Here we're illustrating NK cells. You can see that nicely the population becomes homogeneous for CD56 positive, which is a pan marker for NK cells. Other um, activating uh, receptors on the NK cells also come up, as you can see here, NKP30. The, pro the process is highly scalable. One million iPSCs gives you one E12 NK cells, and that output is continuous. You can every single time start this process and deliver one E12 NK cells. At the global gene expression level, these NK cells look very similar to their primary counterpart, and this process has been transferred to now manufacturing process, where it's done in multiple sites. Our collaborators at University of Minnesota and internally at FATE, the product is released based on the fact that it's pure for hematopoietic cells and NK cells as high viability, and now allows you to have a homogeneous, high-quality product that's low cost. This, each dose is $2,500. It's, uh, it's thawed and directly infused. There is no uh, processing needed, so it becomes a true administered off-the-shelf product in an outpatient setting, and now is analogous to pharmaceutical drug product development. This process, uh, as I mentioned, it starts with an iPSC population, it's engineered, single cells are selected, a master cell bank is fully characterized and allows for uh, production of TNNK cells in an off-the-shelf manner. Using this process, we have now started three clinical investigations. First is FT500, which is the first iPSC-derived product um, cleared for clinical investigation in the US. 12 patients have been dosed. Combined, six, 60 doses have been given to those 12 patients, and so far, the product has been safe and well-tolerated. FT516 is the first engineered product. Um, it's the first engineered iPSU product in clinical investigation in the world, to our um, best of our belief. And um, first patient with the lowest dose has shown anti-leukemia effect and also persistence in the bone marrow. FT596 is a multi-factor engineered product, which I will talk about. FD596 consists of three anti-tumor modalities. It's the first product, uh, first cancer immunotherapy product to be engineered with three active anti-tumor modalities. It consists of HNCD16 and high, high affinity um, non-cleavable CD16, which, is a, which binds to um, antibodies and elicits antibody-dependent cellular cytotoxicity. This is a key um, action of general killing by NK cells, and we've, uh, we've enhanced that feature. So now we can combine FT596 with any monoclonal antibody to elicit enhanced ADCC. We've also um, introduced a card that's been calibrated to NK biology targeting uh, the CD19 antigen. And finally, we've added IL-15 receptor fusion to support persistence and reduce the dependency for exogenous cytokine support. Because the clone was selected to have one copy of each um, product, you can see on the 
far uh, right hand side, sorry, the top should say CD9, CD16, the orange should say CAR19, and the bottom should say IL-15 receptor fusion. You can see that each are expressed homogeneously, and this is very challenging if you want to engineer uh, NK cells or even T cells to have this profile. So compared to primary uh, NK cells, you can see such uniform differential. To show what step matter these engineering attributes do, um, we created a co-culture assay, which consists of cancer cells that are CD19 positive, CD20 positive. So these are antigens on B cells that are usually uh, targeted, as we heard earlier. We also co-cultured with um, CD19 negative, CD20 positive in case uh, cancer cell line. When we introduced the CAR19, you can see you can effectively uh, eliminate the CD19 positive uh, target cells, and when you add the IL-15, it's completely eliminated because IL-15 enhanced persistence and durability of the product. With utilizing the agent CD16, we add um, rituximab, the anti-CD20 antibody, and clear the second half of the pro uh, product that you could argue has, uh, mimics antigen escape. We use CD20 here, we could have used CD22, CD123, or other monoclonal antibodies that target B cell malignancies. This product in vivo is uh, highly efficacious as a monotherapy uh, targeting leukemia. It has the ability to control um, tumor in, a, in an extensive period. In combination, going after lymphoma, you can see where rituximab fails to control the tumor burden in combination with FT596, does a great job maintaining durability and control of the tumor. And finally, in an allogeneic um, system, you can see that compared to CAR-T, FT596 as a monotherapy uh, is comparable, if not better. So my final data slide, I will go recap what this combinational strategy is. So here, we used Raji lymphoma cell line, that's CD19 positive, CD20 positive, and compared FT596 to five different primary CAR-T products. As you can see here in this low effective target ratio, so in vitro stress test, where only 0.3 to 1 ratio of, uh, of, the, uh, of the effective cell is com uh, compared to the target. You can see that FT596 is comparable to primary CAR-T. However, when you add rituxin, you can see that you get a more deeper durable response. In a different format, trying to mimic antigen escape, we knocked out CD19 from the Raji cell line and created CD19 negative, CD20 positive cells and then increase a high, and introduce a high capacity test to look at uh, effector function. As you can see here, primary CAR-T and FT596 alone failed to control the tumor uh, elimination over a long-term period. However, in combination with Tuxin, FT596 um, was able to uh, eliminate the, the tumor load in the, in the vitro culture. So this is uh, what's being presented at ASH for faith therapeutics specific to CAR programs. As I mentioned, FT596 is uh, publication number 301, presented later today. We also have a CAR BCMA um, in combination with Darzalex a product where we've knocked out CD38 to eliminate fracture sites. So this is a true NK product that can uh, sustain ADCC as well as CAR BCMA activity. And this is uh, publication number 3214, IND to be filed second half of next year. And excitingly, we are also working on uh, first off-the-shelf CAR-T product where um, we're utilizing some of the top engineering attributes that's coming out of Sloan Kettering and out of Dr. Michelle Satterline's lab to create a first off-the-shelf CAR-T product and they'll be filed um, in, in, in a few months. And that's publication number 4434.